with some great people too. And I mean, there's great, one of the stories I tell actually, I wasn't gonna do this, I was gonna do something else, but we'll, I'll tell this now is that you don't always know this about people who play, but a lot of us are pretty shy sometimes. And I've always been shy about my playing. When I started in my mid-20s in North Carolina, it was a fluke. I wish, actually, it's, no, this is true. This fiddle, I have a third fiddle now. This, I usually don't carry this one here. This fiddle, I was living in a house, if you know Chapel Hill, North Carolina, across the tra train tracks from Chapel Hill. Lydia knows that because she lived uh, around Pittsburgh in Chatham County for a while. So. Uh, uh, I was living in Carbro in a little mill house in the early 80s. I had a housemate who was a banjo player, a housemate who was a guitar player, and I was the boring housemate. I didn't play. And this is 80, 81, 82. They had parties 40 years ago. Those folks were good then, and they are good now. One guy, though, wasn't so good, and he, uh, he left this fiddle. You know, anybody wants to buy this for $100 for the fiddle, the bow, and the case. And I wouldn't have gone across the street for this fiddle. I was working, I was working at a bookstore called Intimate, the Intimate Bookshop, downtown Chapel Hill. The guy who was the man, the owner, a guy named Wallace Kuralt. His brother was Charles Kuralt, who was like kind of famous with that MTV and that. So his brother was the it was not, not, not the famous one. He had this bookstore. He was not a very good businessman. But they had this store. So I was the boring housemate that didn't play. I worked at a bookstore for $3 and probably 85 cents an hour. And this is like high rent these days. But we were paying, three of us, either we were debating whether it was 165 or 195 total. So we were paying either 55 or 65 dollars each a month to be within walking distance of wow. Chapel Hill. This is 80, 81, 82. So I could buy this for $100, you know, even though I was only making $3.85 an hour. And when I started, my housemate Ned, who lives in Portland, like my older brother said, Ken, you're scaring the cats. Quit scaring the cats. Put that thing away. And it was both wounding, but I was stubborn and I kept at it. And Ned has given me my greatest compliment as a fiddle player. He said, Ken, you ought to start painting. And I said, what? I can't draw. I said, you couldn't play fiddle either, so now you can paint. And that's like my best compliment from Ned. And, uh, but I've been shy because around the beginning, people at these parties were really good. And I've been, I've been blessed that I've been around people who are really good everywhere I've gone. And I've been like in the background on the periphery playing stubbornly. And Fairbanks was good because there were the long winters. But there was a nice music scene there. But when I lived in Nome, I was the best for a thousand miles. It was really good for my confidence. And I was telling Lydia the other night, I would travel to villages where I would teach over the telephone. And part of our budget, this is the early 90s, I would meet my college students and I would take this fiddle and I would uh, knock on the door. I'd be, in this, I'd be in the village earlier in the day. My classes were in the evening I'd, and the planes would fly earlier. I'd say, can I play some fiddle and do writing with the kids in the school. And every principal said, yeah. And if you know the arts, you have to set stuff up <laughs> years sometimes in advance to set up anything. I would just show up in these far villages. And there's this one island called St. Lawrence Island. And you can look that place up. There's two villages, Savunga and Gamble. And Gamble is on the tip. It's 40 miles from Siberia. Siberian Yupik is the first language. That's, they speak both those villages, the only place in this continent where they speak that, it's those two villages. And I went there a few times, working with the kids, and the third, fourth grade teacher said, you know, the kids had never seen a violin before. So by getting on a plane from Nome, where I was the best for a thousand miles, I'd take this fiddle and play for the kids, and I'm being like historic, because I would play and I'll, I'll play a tune that, and then we'll do something with Lydia, and then I don't know how much, how much time we have because we've been kind of going with it. But I'll play this tune, tell a little story with it, is I would go back to these villages. These villages, the kids do not test well. They're, but they're as smart as the kids anywhere. Kids are kids. And 
I would ask like a third, fourth grade class, what do you remember from my last time here? And they would say, I know you, you never shave. I had a beard back then too, it was darker, but I know you, you never shave. I go, fair enough. Or they go, I know you, or what they'd also say is he's back, Chong. Because even though it's the end of the world, and these are only third, fourth graders, there was a drug culture and they knew Cheech and Chong and anybody who was beard and glasses and wasn't Eskimo was Chong. He's back, Chong. Oh, that's great. Then there was the kids who said, I know you, you're the poetry guy. I still got the poetry bookmarks and cards that you give out. And then there are the kids who say, you're the fiddle guy, play the cat song. And this is when I'll play, I'll play on my own. A friend of mine made this up in uh, Seattle for his cat named Sadie. So the tune's called Sadie at the Back Door. I'll just play it through a couple of times, but this is why kids in rural Alaska would remember this tune and remember me from playing this tune. Questions, requests, while we, you know, we don't want to go too long with this, it's like, you know, we got the people here. You want us to do stuff, I'm happy to do stuff. But also it's... Uh, Let's do that tune with the, um, I, was, I think I played, um, I forget which one, but some cross A tune and you were telling the story about oh, that, 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 Before the, the Raffle. That's the famous, that, that, that's like my, my, one of my signature pieces. Yeah, this is one that... Uh, Lydia hadn't heard this before, so she liked the story. It's a, it's a story that I tell. Play a fiddle tune that changed my life. It's why I met Lydia. It's why we're playing. Why we played the gig at what was that like that Press Alley? What was that called? Press Bay Alley. Press Bay Alley in Ithaca with her boys. Why we're here. Why I am gonna be. Playing Wednesday, I'm going to be visiting schools in Bell Fountain, Ohio. Why next Thursday, after being in Bell Fountain on Wednesday, I'm going to drive through the night to be in Hattiesburg, Mississippi on Thursday <laughs> because of this tune. That's why I'm going to spend all of December. Everything I do is because of this tune, which gives it a, a big send up. And it's, it's a fiddle tune that changed my life. It's called Cluck Old Hen. I probably played it when I was through. Uh, 13 years ago, because I play this tune a lot, it's a fiddle tune that changed my life. <laughs> <laughs> 